In Massachusetts, uh, sometimes people in, when DCF is involved have questions about uh, what DCF can ask or going to the home um, and what you need to do or not do. And it depends on what type of DCF worker you have, whether it's an emergency response worker, whether it's an investigator, whether it's an assessment worker or an ongoing worker. Um, there are sometimes for emergency basis or, or the quick-lived investigations, some ability for that, that investigator to contact the school or medical providers without a release. Um, with ongoing or assessment workers, they generally need releases and you need to determine whether or not you want to sign those releases or not. Uh, DCF, you don't, do not have to let DCF into your home, but there's some advantages and disadvantages of letting DCF into your home. You're entitled to have an attorney with you answering some questions. Um, you can answer some questions, but not all. You can choose to talk to the attorney before signing any written, uh, written agreements, which used to be called a service plan or an action plan. Um, there are questions sometimes about if DCF school being overbroad and asking questions that are unrelated to the allegations. DCF does have generally a protocol or some questions that they're supposed to ask people, where sometimes they can be fairly irrelevant to most people, but sometimes they're required by DCF. So for example, um, there's something called the Indian Child Welfare Act or ICWA, um, which DCF is supposed to ask most people about whether you have any tribal um, affiliation. And for most people that the answer might be no, but it's one that DCF would ask most people. Sometimes DCF asks about religious aspects and about background information that may or, not, may or may not be relevant, but generally it's part of their protocols. You can then determine what you want to share or not share with DCF. Um, and depending on the circumstances, you can decide whether or not you want to talk to them at all, whether or not you want to meet at your home or their office, and whether you want somebody, somebody present or not present with them. There's not a cookie cutter approach to working with DCF. Um, you do want to avoid being argumentative with them, but you also want to make sure that you're protecting your due process rights and making sure that you're able to advocate for yourself or ideally having an attorney or an advocate with you to be able to make sure that you're not getting taken advantage of in the process and being able to explain what's reasonable and what's unreasonable for DCF to ask about and what are the best answers to give or not give depending on the circumstances.